Welcome to the video where we are going to be introducing the concept of support reactions. And we're going to start this discussion by reminding ourselves a little bit about equilibrium and free body diagrams. So equilibrium. So let's say we have this object, some arbitrary object with a number of forces, F1, F2, and F3 acting on the object and in addition a number of moments, couple moments causing the object to rotate. And if we would like to determine the equilibrium of this object, which again means that the body has no acceleration, so no acceleration means that it either has a constant velocity moving at a constant velocity or not moving at all. The velocity is zero and remains zero. So this example here that I've drawn is non-concurrent. It does, it has forces that act not all through one location. And so for a non-concurrent object to remain in equilibrium, we've seen this a few times already during this uh, quarter, the sum of all the forces need to be equal to zero and the sum of the moments about some point, which I'm using point O as shown on the figure here, need to be equal to zero. These are the conditions necessary for equilibrium. So these conditions are necessary and sufficient. So for a non-concurrent object to be in equilibrium, the sum of the forces have to equal to zero and the sum of the moments have to be equal to zero. And when we continue with this discussion, we're going to assume that all the objects that we're dealing with are rigid bodies and have no deformations within the body. That dealing with what happens internally to the material is a more advanced class that is not discussed in statics. So in statics, we're going to assume a rigid body that does not move it when we apply external loads. So if we look only in two dimensions, this is going to be applicable when the force system can be projected onto a single plane, so for example the xy plane, with moments perpendicular to that plane. Okay, So this is going to be if we can get all of the forces and only the xy plane and all moments being rotated about the z-axis. When this is the case, we can simplify our equations to be the sum of the forces in the x direction all need to sum to zero, the sum of the forces in the y direction need to sum to zero, and the sum of the moments about the z-axis need to sum, to sum to zero. So we have three equations here. All right, so that's just a little reminder about equilibrium. Now let's talk again about free body diagrams. Okay, so free body diagrams we've practiced quite a bit in this class. We draw them in every problem and they are in fact the first step in solving for equilibrium. So we want to be able to look and see all the forces that are acting on a given body. And their purpose is to identify all known and unknown external forces and moments acting on a rigid body. Okay, so let's look at an example. Here's an example. We're going to find a free, draw the free body diagram for the 10 kilogram mass shown. So there's a 10 kilogram mass sitting on a table and it is attached by a cable that goes over a pulley to a 5 kilogram mass which hangs off the table. So I'm going to start by drawing a representation of that 10 kilogram mass. And now again, I need to look at all the places where this 10 kilogram mass interacts with something external to it, okay? So first place I've identified is this cable. So I'm gonna draw that cable as a force of tension pulling towards, along the line of the, of the pulley, of the cable towards the pulley and the other force. And then I'm going to indicate um, Fg here, which is the force of gravity. So 
the earth again doesn't physically touch the object but it does pull down gravity and then I have the interaction between the mass and the table so I'm going to represent that as a normal force pushing up and I've added one more force here just so this can be, remain in equilibrium and that's friction so that's what I've shown here is the friction force and it acts in opposition to the pulling from the cable. So this is the type of free body diagram we've kind of seen frequently where we have cables and something sitting on a surface but objects on surfaces and objects with cables are not the norm they're not the only types of supports we're going to see in statics. So we need to take a closer look at what happens when an object is being supported. And so we call this the support reactions. So when evaluating static systems, we need to closely consider the supports. What I mean by this is we need to look and see if the support or the connection prevents translation in any given direction. If it does, then a force is developed in that direction. Additionally, if a support or connection prevents rotation, then the support creates a couple moment. A couple moment is exerted on the body by the support. So I encourage you to make sure as you go through this video that you take a look. Sorry about that. So take a look at section 4.3 and especially figure 4.1 in your textbook. It's going to really help kind of um, further help you figure out what I'm talking about when I talk about supports and reactions. So we're going to go through a few examples of some of the most common types of supports used in statics. So the first support reaction I'm going to talk about is a roller. Okay, so I'm going to show here a couple of examples. So this is a bridge, and you may be able to see really closely here, I'll circle it, that there is this little bitty roller supporting the bridge on top of this this pylon okay so that's a roller and then here's another example where I have a beam and supporting it is this type of roller that the beam is just sitting on so the roller what does it do if you think about what how a roller acts it prevents translation into the roller okay so I cannot push the beam down in either of these cases, sort of in the y direction. So the object can, however, still translate side to side. Like on a wheel, if you think of any kind of wheel, I can still move it in what I might consider the x direction, but not in the y direction. And the object can still rotate. So that means that a roller exerts one force. Okay, so here, this is this figure you'll see in your textbook. Here's how t a roller might be represented in a figure in the book. So if I think about this roller and I draw a free body diagram for the roller, I'm going to draw my beam and I'm not going to draw the roller. I'm taking the object, the beam or the piece, away from the roller and I'm going to represent the roller as an external force so it needs a free body diagram. So in this case, it's going to be just one force acting up. Okay, so that's a roller. It has one force exerted on the object. 
The next support reaction I'm going to look at is a pin. So what does a pin look like? Here's one example that you might see. So you can see that it's kind of like a hinge. There's an object that goes through and holds the beam or the whatever's being supported in place. And then here's another example. So again, it looks sort of like a hinge, but you can see like a bolt going all the way through and that's considered a pin. So how does, what sort of motion does a pin prevent? So if you think about a pin, it's gonna prevent translation in two directions, both the X and the Y directions, if we're thinking only in two dimensions here. But I can still rotate my object in the pin. So this object, you can imagine, I can't pull it in the X or the Y direction, but I can rotate it. So a pin exerts two forces onto the object. So again, here's a representation as seen in your textbook. This is a frictionless pin or hinge. And if I wanna draw a free body diagram, I'm removing the support from the object and representing it with forces instead. So I'm gonna have a force in the X exerted by the pin and a force in the Y exerted by the pin. Okay, so this exerts two different forces. A roller has one unknown, the pin has two unknowns exerted onto the object. The last support I'm gonna look at in two dimensions is called a fixed support. Okay, so here is a picture. So you might see a beam sticking out of a object of a building. And when it's secured in place, sort of within concrete, that's considered a fixed support. So this is gonna prevent translation in the X and Y. I'm not gonna be able to move this in the X or Y direction, but I'm also not gonna be able to rotate this beam. So the fixed support also prevents rotation. So a fixed support exerts two forces and a moment onto the object. So again, here's a representation of a fixed support. And if I wanna draw a free body diagram of the beam, I'm gonna put on it a force in the X, a force in the Y, and a moment, okay? So I wanna do an example where I have a beam and I draw its free body diagram. So here's a, free, we're gonna do an example of a free body diagram of supports. So here is a beam, it might be a little difficult to read, hopefully you can kinda of see what's going on. There's a beam over here, there's a, a hinge or a pin support at A, there's a beam with a 500 pound force at a three, four, five triangle. Then there's a roller here at B and then an external moment applied. So if I wanna draw the free body diagram of this object, free body diagram of the beam, I'm gonna draw the beam and I'm gonna draw first my external force is already on there. So I've represented the 500 pound force and then I'm gonna put in here the 600 pound foot couple moment. And then when I go at point A and I see a, a pin, I'm gonna represent that with two forces, one in the X and one in the Y. So I'll label those AX and AY. And then at B, I'm gonna draw one force in the Y direction, BY, because that is the translation that that, sorry, that roller can prevent. So B is a roller, so I can't move it down into the roller, so I have BY. And then to complete the free body diagram, I can just put in these distances of five feet, and there you go. That is the how you draw the free body diagram, representing the supports on your free body diagram. So that concludes the introduction video on support reactions. And in class next time, we're going to spend time practicing drawing free body diagrams and solving the free body diagrams when we have support reactions.
So see you next time in class. Bye.